How's it going everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to do a, another lighting tutorials for this lighting series in Blender. Uh, as you already know, I'm a photographer and apparently also doing CG work. So this is why I'm here. And today's topic is about the snoot. Uh, is, this is one very popular light modifiers in the, out there in the market and a lot of beginners or professionals that are using this modifier to to modify the light what is basically it is is the it actually narrowed down the beam of a light to a very specific a beam of light you can even put a a grid which where i did talk about it in the previous uh, i believe is the softbox uh, lighting videos you can check it out and you can actually get a more refined uh, the, the light as a small areas and then you can even put the color gels inside of it so you can have a color effect when you do that and the another another type of a snood i want to talk about is this is called optical snood uh, so basically what this is difference is this this has a has actually have a, a lens and the really better one that actually you can attach some special lens that you already have you can have a more fine refined control of your light with this snood and this one, you see this tiny um, metal chips, or the, but there's a hole in there. It actually called gobo. What gobo does is basically you project the light using the shape, so you can have a specific shapes uh, project to to on the background. That's how photographers usually use when you're shooting a a, in a, a portrait in the, inside of a studio or maybe in a very controlling environment when you're shooting. Uh, products and uh, you just want some interesting light and shadows and patterns on your background or even on the subject just kind of creating that uh, interesting atmosphere w or w through the lighting so what's the point of having these uh, today we're using that well this uh, entire lighting series is trying to explain the studio light to the uh, non-professional uh, photographers who are also learning CGI and trying to know how to do better lighting in the blender in the CG world because a lot of times I get a, a questions that how can I learn studio light and but f for most of you if you are coming through a graphic designer or il illustrator background you don't ever have a professional uh, environment to really working with light and you don't know how light works and that you just see all these saturated market selling you a massive amount of light modifiers but you just don't know what it is and why you're using it so this is where this um, video series coming from it's just trying to explain that uh, how light works and uh, and what we can do inside of CG uh, software 3d software to really help you to understand how to use the light and mimic the, the the realistic way how to use studio light. I think that in this way would be the best way to learn studio lighting. Okay, anyway, uh, enough for this uh, uh, modifier introductions. We are going to go to the uh, some examples right here. So as you can see here, you have to go into the solid mode. I'm building something like very similar to a snood. Uh, you see, there's this is an open end. Uh, and they, as you can see the lights in here and I put a light uh, inside of it uh, right here the whole re the reason I put uh, I'm actually uh, close this this end because if I'm open it up there's got some light uh, spill around from this back end I don't want to do that so this is what the ba very basic snood uh, about so you can actually just you know changing the the sides of the snood to really control the beam of light on the other side right there so that's basically it this is the snood effect but what is the differences between the snood uh, or compared to the optical snood that I was just talking about with a really bit fancier lens in front of it. So what does op optical uh, snood does is it, it still have kind of you got shooting a small, really small beam of light, but it have a very sharp edge on that, right? You see that? This is very soft and a little bit diffused edge. It's not very clear. This is what a regular snood 
as you can do and also definitely is way cheaper than the optical snood in real life because you know this is build quality and the materials and the, and the also techniques and uh, build inside for these two so this is what this regular snood is about this is what optical snood is about and remember, I also remember the uh, also mentioned the the goggles that we can put in between the light or inside the the snoot, uh, so we can actually have some uh, special effects. So what I so next thing I want to show you, and I'm also very excited that that I, I figured out this this trick. So let me show you what's going on for this guy. So if I'm going back to this way, you see this very cool gobo. I just well, I didn't make this gobo, but I first thing I want to show you that the differences between the regular snood and the optical snood. The optical snood is more like this, the, the spotlight we're just using. The reason I put some color in there is just easier to, to see. So the optical snood is more like very uh, sharp and defined edge. The radius right now I'm putting zero. Um, technically, this is not a correct because it's impossible to have radius of zero and then and then you 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 have some uh, light resources. So I, you can put a, like point zero 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 one. You can just just show something, but it, it, this well demonstrated the, my point. The the diffuse edge, the sharp edge, and then I made another gobo right here. So to actually using real gobo, I mean go pattern, gobo pattern from the internet because these are some gobos that you can purchase when you buy actual gobo online and they you can actually have these. And what I did is I basically put this one in from the light and the actually this is gonna project the patterns over there. It's pretty cool. So what you can do, you can just grabbing these in here. So you see that over there? Yeah, and then you might start asking why would you do that and uh, uh, and how would you do that? Do this gobo? I will show you immediately. Uh, the reason we're having gobo in here is we're trying sometimes we're trying to creating some fake atmosphere and we're going to trying to pretending oh this is kind of a window look. You can do something interesting in the background. So these gobo. I didn't draw these, I didn't design these. It's funny because we're working in the 3D world and in the CGI world, these gobos that after the design, you don't even need to purchase them. You can just download some sample gobos from the product website that they're trying to sell. You can just kind of make it your own. I will show you how to do that. And it's very easy to do. Uh, right here, let me pull the Photoshop uh, file over here. So this is what the, the, the what I downloaded uh, or screenshot or whatever or you can draw it yourself and do whatever pattern you want to do is basically like this and it's white and black and sometimes they're just selling these on online you can buy the, that in the in the real world this is these are going to be either uh, made of metal or something like pretty uh, in uh, hard materials that you can slide in, in inside of your uh, optical snood so basically what i did i just cut off the white part and the background is uh, uh, is is trans uh, transparent right now so and then i just gonna save this file as a png file which eventually essentially these are just going to be uh, empty right there's going to be absolutely no pixel for that then what i put inside of the blender what i did i shift a i'm adding a a image and the image as a plane. So you can enable this add-on over here to do that same thing. So just, just type in uh, import images as plane. It's a default add-on, but you need to enable that. It's coming with the Blender. You can do that. After you put it in here, so basically it's, it actually helps you to, to kind of uh, do all these things making sure the alpha is connect to alpha and the color to alpha to color and then you have it and um, you're just gonna positioning this between the light to getting some really cool visual effect over there I see we got something over here then sometimes you might think oh one bow that that doesn't really helpful because sometimes I don't want to see these in things in the scene and how can we get rid of these yeah the one another trick that, that I often use to just select this plane right you go here 
and you go to the visibilities and the ray visibility you turn off the, un, uncheck the camera one then it's disappeared i mean it's not going to show in your render then you have a very interesting background light yes yeah, much better than the one playing right yeah you can do a, a bunch of different things and uh, you can just kind of manipulating changing positions of that light and you can do a lot of cool stuff and i would i would i I really want to show you the process of, of how to think like a photographer and solving problem in the CGI world. So you see, you can do a lot of interesting stuff. And uh, I'm really hoping this uh, short video is going to help you to understanding the light much better, uh, especially studio lighting. And then you can apply to your personal work and project in the, when you're doing uh, lightings in the in 3D. So a lot of time I think uh, uh, most of the CGI photographers, uh, st uh, artists or people who are getting into 3D, they don't have a solid understanding of the light. They put too much work on modeling and texturing, but without a good proper light, it, your work is just going to went away. It's, I think lighting is very critical, so that's why I'm trying to help you guys to get a really better understanding about uh, how photographers think things and uh, how photographers use light. And yes, that's it. And uh, if you're really interesting about a photorealistic product re rendering, please consider subscribing my channel and uh, we can certainly hang out on my Instagram page. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.